the most clueless bartenders from Bar Rescue. So far from watching this show, one thing I've learned is that no one knows what they're doing ever, period. So the most clueless people, this gonna be good. And as someone who never knows what's going on 80% of the time, I feel quite qualified <laughs> to, to judge them. I've been clueless on every TV show I've ever been on. Speaking of, look what I got. This was my Christmas gift from MTV. A hoodie. It's, uh, it's an ugly ass hoodie. <laughs> That's also a double XL, which is comfy, but also kind of a read. So I guess what I'm trying to say is being clueless isn't always a bad thing. Look at me. I've made clueless work for me, bitch. I also haven't showered in a while. I've been in like a mood. I've been feeling out of it and I was getting ready for this video and then I saw my hair. I didn't even wash my hair for this because it kind of looked cute. Not showering and being in a catatonic state works for me. I make depression look hot. <laughs> But I'm excited to see this. I'm excited to see how clueless you have to be to be the most clueless people from Bar Rescue because no one knows what the fuck's going on. When I first started bartending, I didn't know how to do shit. I couldn't even make a Long Island iced tea. So technically I was clueless, but you need like a willingness to learn. You need to be humble. An expert is just someone who's clueless with experience. So be sure to like this video and subscribe for future ones. And without further ado, let's get into watching these clueless bastards. Everything is about you. The food from this kitchen could literally kill somebody. I have to go in and shut this down and figure out who the hell is responsible. How, what does it take to, hold on. They always talk about this. They always say in every one of these videos that the food can literally kill somebody. All these establishments can literally kill somebody. <laughs> Why does it take John Tafford's ass to come in and point this stuff out? Where is a health department? Where is anyone doing their job? Right off the bat, we're starting with, you could die. That's a little extreme. Show him how many times you wipe sweat off his head, puts it down, picks up food, throws it on the grill, and your food is covered in sweat. Now you're laughing, is this fun for you? You should put gloves. Is it the sweat that could kill people? Can sweat kill people? I mean, it's nasty. It's nasty and they need Jesus, but that could kill people? I've seen some of the food that they produce on this show. That can kill people. The mold, the nasty shit, the bugs. But sweat? Sweat sometimes turns me on. Sometimes I want the bartender to sweat in my food. I'd be like, you sexy as fuck. Can you sweat in that cocktail for me, please? <laughs> I put my blood, sweat, and tears into- Not the blood. Don't put blood. That's how you get HIV. Take your prep. Everybody, take your prep. You never know what's going in your drinks. <laughs> Straight people, take your prep. When I bring the health department in here and shut your ass down, is that going to be funny? I would be sucky. It really would, because I'm going to freaking do it. I'm gonna shut you guys down. Shut the grill off. Why does John Tafford have to do it? Does the does the health department just avoid certain places? I just hired him as kitchen manager not too long ago. We were kind of like kitchen manager. Yeah. Are you? Nuts. I mean, it's, it's what I had do to do. Do you know that this guy's gonna kill somebody? Okay, he's sweating and he's sweating. I don't know if it would kill. Am I wrong? I mean, it's nasty. I'm not saying it's not nasty. It's nasty. It's disgusting. But saying like. Your sweat is gonna kill some- If someone told me that my sweat was gonna kill somebody, I'd be like, oh my god, am I that nasty? <laughs> I'm not doing this. I'm out. <laughs> what? I'm not in charge of the kitchen, first of all. So, to yell at me about the kitchen, I mean, he's yelling at the wrong person. The bar owner is in charge of everything. You own the bar, sweetie, sweets. Miss ma'am, you own everything. You're in charge of everything. And it's always a straight man who walks away from being yelled at. See, that's the problem. A gay would never. A gay would be like, oh, yell at me harder, daddy. Like, I want John to yell at me and choke me. Come on. <laughs> I can do it, for sure, man. I want to shake your hand. I want you to look me in the face and do it. Either you will come on board and do this, or I walk out. Come with me. Yeah, He's just sitting there drinking a beer in his fit. See, this is what I don't understand about this kind of reality show, okay? I would be amiss to sit here and be like, oh, you shouldn't be yelling at people back. That's literally my whole job on every reality show I've ever fucking been on. But this show is different. Like you have this man coming into your establishment to save it because obviously it sucks. So to be dismissive, and to not listen to what he's saying and be rude and disrespectful right back. Like, what are you, what are you, why are you, why do you even do this? You're just making yourself look worse. I will not work with him. This is his second week in the kitchen. He's never worked in the kitchen before. He doesn't have the software training. Who didn't well, train him? We did not have a kitchen manager. No one trained him. Okay, here's- How do they get the job? How do you hire somebody to do it as a manager? 
How do you hire somebody to be a manager who's never done the job, who doesn't know how to do the job, and then not teach them how to do the job? And then you got John Tavern's big ass coming in screaming at him, telling him that his sweat is gonna be killing people. Tomorrow night, either he succeeds or he fails, agree? Right. I will yeah. train him all day tomorrow. If he doesn't try, he's gone. If you don't try, I'm gone. I, I guarantee you we're both gonna try. We'll see. That's literally all it takes. You just gotta prove yourself. When you get the job, you sink or swim. I might've been clueless when I started bartending, but when I got that job, I figured it the fuck out. I started on a Friday night at a busy gay bar in Manhattan. That shit was nuts. I was working lesbian night and lesbians scared the shit out of me because gay men will put anything in their mouths. Okay, but lesbians wanna know what it is. <laughs> so you gotta know your shit. Went really bad. I feel very disrespected. At the end of the day, it's all on me. I'm a, I'm a human being. I gotta, I gotta live up to my expectations. John Taffer could have not messed up the kitchen so much. I'm hit. At the end of the day, it's all on me. At the end of the day, I have to do my job. <laughs> <laughs> At the end of the day, I gotta do what I was like hired to do. Oh, <gasps> gasp. <laughs> dun dun dun. There's some people that are mad about their food. I'm gonna buy them some shots of us. Do it. She's mad about her food. Are you buying her another shot? What does she need? You're mad about your food too? I don't know what we're doing, but let's have fun. <laughs> That's literally this YouTube channel. I have no idea what I'm doing, but this is fun. Also, I love the problem solving skills of, oh, you're all mad? Here's free alcohol. <laughs> oh, you're all pissed? Let me get you fucked up to try to make, make up for it. That's me. Oh God, I'm relating to these people, which is not a good thing. <laughs> I really just wanted to sit down, maybe have a glass of water. Not really a hard liquor drink. Just a little too much for me to handle, especially since I told them I was driving. Hey! The, okay. Then why, uh, why are you the implanted person to judge bar? I really wanted to come into this bar and critique the drinks by having a glass of water and I'm mad that I didn't get, what? That's the equivalent of me going into a sperm bank and saying, I just wanna read the magazines in the back because I love literature. And I was so mad that they wanted me to come. <laughs> what? What happened? <laughs> Holy <laughs> Peter, the horse is here. <laughs> what? There's a fucking horse in the bar. There's a horse in the bar. Unless I'm referring to a giant dick, I ain't talking about no fucking horse in the bar. We've dealt with bugs. <laughs> We've seen cats. Not one's a horse. You got me though. I'm shocked. Okay, you got me today. Oh my God, there's a horse. I would. I don't know. I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do if I was just sitting in a bar having a cocktail, and a fucking horse came in. You know, I probably love it. <laughs> what would have happened if that horse had broken their leg? That's disgusting. And she's laughing. She thinks this is funny. Oh my God. Look at him, he's so scared and like pooped. Oh, he crapped on the floor. <laughs> We've had people complain that there were tears in the couches. And there's horse shit in the bar. <laughs> what, what am I supposed to, what am I supposed to even say to that? How do I react to that? I mean, I'm laughing, but it's not my fucking bar. What am I gonna say? Um, yeah, horse shit in a bar, not good. No shit. I'm sorry. Yes shit. Yes shit. Horse shit. What's next? Am I gonna be sucking the milk out of a cow's udder live to make my fucking white Russian? If I order a whiskey sour, are you gonna squeeze a chicken till it shits out an egg and then use that right away to crack it in? Like, what the fuck's going on? You almost fell on my table. I'm sitting there going, this ain't his first rodeo. We've all done this one before. Spots rode a horse in the bar, everybody's rode a horse in the bar. You rode a horse in the bar when you're pissed, mother we just saw a horse crap i ain't riding nothing other than a man 
I'm not even a good bottom. If I ever heard somebody said, I just rode a horse in a bar, I think you're coming out of the stall with a smile on your face like you just had a great time, which is also not good. Don't be fucking people in bars. Um, <laughs> what is he gonna say? I'm literally at a loss for words. Like, I, what is he gonna do? Go in there and be like, I don't wanna see a horse in the bar. <laughs> I want them to fight. I want them to fight about why there should be a horse in the bar so bad. A horse took a crap in the middle of this bar tonight and they didn't even clean it up. That is the worst thing I have ever seen. Either these people are morons or they're so drunk they don't get it. They left the ho <laughs> they left the they left the horse shit on the floor. It adds to the experience. You know how we talk on this channel about smell affecting the flavor of the drinks and the cocktail and the overall experience? Maybe that's what they wanted to do. Maybe the cocktails are so bad the horse shit's gonna make up for it. Honestly, maybe it's a cover up. Maybe they're fucking geniuses. Maybe there's so much worse shit that we could be pointing out in this video that they didn't want people to notice, so they said, fuck, what do we do? We gotta divert attention. Bring in the horse! We got underage kids laundering money in the back. Fuck, bring in the horse! Very nice to meet you. Pleasure, good to meet you. You, you look as good in all of your pictures as you have in all of your, Thank all you. your shows. You seem so intoxicated, I'm surprised you know even who the hell I am to be Butter him up, bitch. Butter him up while you got horse shit on the floor. I can't get over this. I cannot get over this. I was not expecting that at all. Hi, John. Can you nice see me? You. Can you even see me? Yeah, I, I can Am see I in you. focus? You're in focus. You're in focus? Okay, sit down if you can. I wasn't quite expecting you tonight, so thank you. I'm sorry. I'm here to help you guys. There are cameras. There are cameras everywhere. I wasn't quite expecting you tonight. There are cameras in your bar. I expect them 24 fucking seven. You guys can tell me in the comments all the time that they didn't tell them what they were doing or they didn't know or whatever. No, 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 no. As long as there is a camera, you stay ready, bitch. If there is a camera watching me do anything, I'm on my guard. I did it on Lohan. I was the best worker they had during that bitch. Until the end, until the end when I got naked and made out with all the customers and all that, you know, we don't gotta talk about that. That was at the end, I can make a million excuses, but that was a month and a half in. I've lasted long as hell on these reality shows without breaking, so I have no fucking sympathy. I made it five weeks on X on the Beach before I broke and had a hysterical meltdown. And these people aren't being triggered by relationship shit the entire fucking time. All they gotta do is do the fucking job. All they gotta do is the normal shit. Well, don't do your normal shit, obviously. Everyone who's worked in the service industry should have no sympathy. Going back to the fucking health inspector, there's like a month that you know that they could be coming in at any fucking moment so you're on your game keeping an eye out. I didn't know you were coming in. There's just a whole crew. Fuck off, fuck off, no way. You blew it, right? We did, but in the mortgage, it that. says if you don't Donna, pay your taxes, I will foreclose. Are really gonna do this? I will. Yes. Listen to me. Only I can tell you to shut up. That's the deal. And you can tell me to shut up, and I will listen. Thank you. How, how in debt are you? I will listen by interrupting. Uh, that bothers me so fucking much. One of my pet peeves is people who don't know how to fucking listen. You're not listening to somebody if the only thing you're doing is thinking about what you're gonna respond, thinking what you're gonna say back. That's not listening. Listening is hearing somebody and absorbing what they're saying, being quiet. Otherwise, you're just talking at me. Don't listen to respond. Listen to absorb. I have sweats. Do I have sweat stains? Oh, well, I don't. Look at that. Look at that growth. Look what happens when we're not binge drinking and taking medication to take care of ourselves. We're less sweaty. $180,000 in debt. Yeah. Right? Do something to have dig you yourself out. You I'm sorry. We I mean, I'm doing the best I can do. You're not doing I the best. I got no you money. You're sitting before me drunk. How many nights a week do they drink? They're probably drinking because of the debt that they're in, and that makes me feel bad. This is probably a couple who is struggling so bad that they are... <laughs> Here's the thing. Owning a bar or restaurant is one of the most stressful things you could fucking do. And then when your life is going into turmoil, it's even worse because at your job, you have a million vices that can become toxic. Trust me, I lived it. That's why I stopped bartending because I was drinking too much. We've talked about it on this channel. I stopped making so many binge drinking videos because it wasn't healthy for me when I would not be in a great place. Sometimes your job is an enabler. <laughs> 
Hello, YouTube. What do you want me to do? I want you to sober up. I want you to come in here tomorrow, and I want you to fight for this place with me, Scott. Yeah, I want to look in your eyes and see a partner, not somebody who's drunk. Oh, my God. I you know what? Can't do I, it. I, I, you know. You're a man. What are you going to do about it, Scott? What? John Tafford is my internalized voice, oh my god! This is me telling myself to get better! Oh my god, we're going full circle. No one can dig you out of a shitty situation other than yourself. And at this point, you are your own problem. Sometimes in life, you go through so much shit that you become your biggest enemy. You become your biggest problem. So you gotta fix you first. These people gotta fix themselves first in order to fix the bar and the fucking debt situation that they're in. These people need to leave and get better. Leave it to their daughter. The daughter's sitting there being great. She could run that shit better. While her parents get fucking help. I will listen to you. Don't talk. Okay. What happened try. was... This was the most... Listening to respond, not listening to listen. Oh. Fuck! You could even tell, like, he's not mad. Like, I'm, I'm getting, oh my God, am I getting a warm fuzzy spot for John? He's not yelling at them at this point because I think even he's realizing that there's a bigger problem here that people should be concerned about. <laughs> and we're putting them on TV, which now I'm relating to because these people need help and we're turning it into a storyline for views and ratings. No, <laughs> oh my God. I'm telling you, they're covering up bigger problems. They're co that's why they have horses shitting in the bar. So basically what happened was we didn't pay our property taxes. We couldn't come up with it, we tried. So you defaulted on your contract. Now the bank has the right to take your property away. Yeah. They were ready to close the doors and put us to auction. We filed bankruptcy the same day. This girl is a warrior. <laughs> oh my God. This girl probably has to deal with so much. She's the adult. I bet you she's such a strong person, but it breaks my heart when I see the kid being the adult in the family, even though she's not a kid, but like literally give the bar to her. Parents leave. You know what? I've been fighting for this place every day because this is me. Uh -huh. My name's on the door and I have fought to get you here to have you save my business. But Scott, listen to me. Then listen and implement to what he's saying. Honestly, like, I've been fighting to, like, fix this place. Motherfucker, you gotta fix yourself first. If you can't love yourself, how the hell are you gonna get anybody to love your bar? Here's the deal, guys. Okay. Every bar owner that I Don't know who's successful not. does not drink in their bar. So. <laughs> Woo! Is that why Lohan Beach Club <laughs> failed? Uh, no, she's sober. She's great. She's doing amazing things. She had a show come out. A movie. A movie, right? She's great. She's doing amazing. I stand. I support. I support her. I'm going to I'm gonna back up what I said on Good Morning America. She's great. She's great. She's fine. She's fine. She's about as fine as I am. <laughs> ah! No. They don't drink in this place. That's the really? deal. Absolutely. You guys have one drink. Yeah. I walk out of here. Putting all the pressure on the girl to be the parent. Oh God, oh, that breaks my heart. But it also is, you know what? It's very, it's true. I make a lot of jokes about like, yeah, you could drink behind the bar as a bartender. You could do that and everything would be fine. But it's all about knowing your limits and knowing how to handle yourself. Because if you can't do that, it becomes a problem. I've seen bartenders get sent home because they were too drunk. And all the bartending staff agrees with that. If you can't handle yourself, if you don't know your limits, you need to leave. You should not be a bartender. I'd be a hypocrite to say don't drink on the job because I used to drink on the job all the time but I never let it impede my work. I never got so fucked up that I was not able to work. And if you do, you need to leave. Not only for yourself, but because you're gonna ruin it for everybody else. I wanna talk about integrity for a minute. Why did you copy everything from across the street? I didn't copy everything. You, you're gonna realize a lot of that was my ideas. But you sold it to them. I mean, you sell a business to them, you get paid, you walk away, then you try to steal everything that they bought and paid for, then they sue you, then you spend $100,000 on lawyers to protect your thievery. I don't understand why bars do this. You have to have individuality to make people come to your bar instead of the other place. A lot of gay bars, especially here in West Hollywood, do that, especially with things like drag shows. There's a lot of drama in West Hollywood because bars copy drag nights from other bars. They copy themes, they copy specials, they copy shit like that. And it causes a lot of internal drama because everybody's trying to do what works. When you know what works, having an individual idea that brings people into your bar. You got a bar like Flaming Saddles, Country Boys, 
sexy as hell, gay bar in fucking, what, cowboy boots. Amazing. You got High Tops, which is like a sports theme bar that plays football. And I guess they want to pretend that they're at top, but everybody in that buzz fucking bottoms is West Hollywood. And then you got the Abbey that's riding on the coattails of their success and fame, just as much as they'd be riding the dicks of everybody in town in order to stay famous. Amazing. Everybody's got their own thing. <laughs> if I was opening this bar, there's one color that I would not make the drink. And what do you think it is? I guess green. Of course, because it's right across the street. What decision did you make? The exact one you shouldn't make. I think there's a lot of things that we do, people copy off what we do. Are we fighting over a green drink? There's a million things wrong with a bar, and we're gonna fight over the fact that I want my drinks to be green. Bitch, in in a frog glass? What is it, senior frogs? Bitch, been done. It's like content creators who just copy other people and wonder why they're not fucking successful. Teach me how to make a mojito, Mike. Fuck off, there's a million other bartenders who do it better than me and it's already been done. Go to the educated bartender, go to Anders Ericsson. You know what, you wanna laugh and be turned on? Go to Greg, I'm out of drink. Ain't no other bartender on YouTube be a bitch like me. If you see this on the street, you think it's a hand grenade. If you see this on the street, you think it's a hand grenade. There is nothing about this cocktail that makes it unique or marketable who gives it why are we fighting over this why is this a thing that we're fighting over i don't understand who gives a shit this is some straight bar shit this is some new orleans spring break bachelor bachelorette party shit gay bars would never that's like us fighting about like i can't believe that bar does vodka sodas <laughs> what i can't believe that bar gives our customers juice because everybody's just on g don't even get me started. You have no individuality. That's I mean, my cup's bigger. My cup's a turtle. My cup's a different color. My cup is totally different. What are we, measuring dick sizes? The fuck is this argument? <laughs> I don't understand. So I walk by here, I see no to-go sign. Up to 80% of the cocktails in this city are sold how on this street? To-go. So I have no to-go sign. I got a building that doesn't hit. You with me, guys? So, you're here. This must be in New Orleans. I'm guessing. Or somewhere where it's legal to walk around and drink on the street. I'm gonna guess New Orleans. I don't have much experience in New Orleans. I would love to. I would love to do a whole like bar crawl tour for this channel in New Orleans. Let's make that happen. Let's manifest that. I remember I was there when I was 14 and there was a bar called Big Ass Beers pulling me in and trying to get me to have like cocktails there and I was so excited. And then my mom came out of nowhere and said, he's 14. And then they threw me out. Are you a good manager? I think so. What should a beverage cost be? Well, I do have some uh, issues. I mean, uh, you don't know. What should labor costs I mean, be? Think, uh, that I couldn't tell you. all About eight points below what you're. Running. A manager who doesn't know it. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't. You don't know the price. I, that's level one. I could guess. I could guess that that annoying drink is like fifteen, seventeen dollars, which is annoying in and of itself. In Atlantic City, those drinks are like seventy bucks. I'm not fucking kidding, they're like 70 bucks. I learned that the hard way once when I was freshly 21. I came from South Carolina where drinks were like two bucks and then I ordered three drinks for me and some friends and it was like $150 for three more fucking drinks. Just get a shot, just get make a shot special. Fuck those things. You guys are straight, do something straight people like. Have a shot glass that looks like a titty. There you go, it just solved your whole fucking crisis. So you got a guy running your bar doesn't have a clue what the numbers add up to. It surprised me when Steve didn't know some of the numbers because he's more of the managing partner of the day-to-day -day operations. But, you know, we're a partnership, so I should take some responsibility too. Right now it surprised me when they don't know anything. How does that surprise you? How do you not know? How do you get to the point where you have to be on fucking bar rescue to fix your shit? And you didn't think that maybe it's because you don't know anything. I don't understand. You're a failure. And I want and it is isn't because if you don't admit you're a failure, then you'll create every excuse admit, in the book. I admit, Blame you yourself. Have a lot of I'm not gonna sit here and look at my face in my place and call me a. Girl. I just didn't. I'll do it again. I love him. I think I love, I think I, I think I'm getting attracted to John. <laughs> You're not gonna come into my place and tell me that I'm a failure because I'm on your show to save my bar because my bar is a failure. You're not gonna come to my failing bar and call me a failure. You're not gonna come in and ask me what the drink prices are and I don't know and call me a failure. Mama, if you weren't a failure, I wouldn't be here.
Hello? That's like me going on X on the beach and saying, I know everything about relationships and I'm great. I'm here because I have everything under control. I'm not here because I'm damaged and have problems with relating to people on an emotional level. No, I went on X on the beach because I'm like, I'm fucking damaged and I don't know what the fuck's going on. Help me. And then they didn't. <laughs> He's supposed to manage this business day to day, but he doesn't have a clue what even a beverage cost is. He's not really a manager. He's a glorified host. Question, are you lazy or do you not care? It's neither one of those things. Well, you better prove it to me because I think it's why. So tell me what it is, Steve. My guy. I could tell you lazy and clueless by that haircut, sweetie. Don't make me come in here. Uh-uh. <laughs> That's why there needs to be a gay bar rescue. Because now we just start reading, you bitch. I can tell you lazy from that wardrobe. I can tell you lazy from that skin routine. I'm only taking what you give me, babe. He's in a hole of half a million dollars, but he sits there smiling as if life is good. If I was out of half a million dollars, I'd be pissed. I never go in a hole to lose half a million dollars. I only go into holes to make money. Trauma. He's gonna have to show me something to make me believe he knows not just the bar industry, he knows New Orleans. Okay, it is New Orleans. It is New Orleans. 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 Turtle Bay is not a brand. Frog cups are not a brand, sweetie. Oh my God. If it is, it's not a good one. Find a brand that works. The other bar had laugh horses shitting on the floor. Now that's a brand. There is not a set trainer. And as bartenders, we take liberties, but we kind of have a lot of freedom as far as making the drinks. And Didn't we have a signature cocktail that they're all fighting over this whole time and there's not a set way to make it? it? What is going on? I can understand, like listen, I understand that some cocktails, bartenders have their own liberty to make. Some cocktails are different in every fucking bar. Some bars don't even want you to have pre-experience. They want to train you to make the drinks the way that they make the drinks because things are always different. It's like how this Italian restaurant makes sauce in a different way than this Italian restaurant. But for a signature cocktail, there needs to be a list. For a signature cocktail, there needs to be a main way to make it that everybody is cohesive on. Otherwise, it's not signature. It's just whatever the fuck you're throwing in a glass. And then they rely on the cup. I never saw so much fucking bullshit over a cup. Has he trained anybody in this room? I mean, I feel like, I feel like we're working with, with adults here. I'm not a babysitter. You are a babysitter. Welcome to management. I expect them to act like adults when they're at work and do what they're supposed to do. How are they going to do that if the manager's not doing that? How do you expect your staff to do the job when you don't do your job and leave by example? This is, why, this is why I get veins pop in my neck. If you don't have a training program, then you need to be more strict on the hiring process. If you are going to hire people with no experience, you have to train them or at least be confident in their abilities. You can't just throw people to the fire and expect them to know what they're doing if you don't know what you're doing either. And they expect to be led by somebody who takes them down a path of success. Are they leading you to success? Who the hell's making money? No one. Thank you. I love when I say something and then he says it right after. Maybe I should just let it play. You're the one who's wrong. The crazier thing than not knowing what the, the drink ratio and everything else is, is letting a TV barman come in here and change the bar overnight. But mama, no he didn't. B -b Bitch, what? You better get his ass. You better go Bad Girls Club. You better get his ass. This is when I'm gonna take my earring off of this one. Uh-uh, I'm gonna fuck you up. First of all, I'm not a TV bar man. I've got a 35 year reputation in this business and there is nobody more respected in our industry than me. And these freaking cameras don't mean to me. Get his ass! That's me on this channel when I read down my qualifications. That's me responding to the comments that are like, this motherfucker doesn't know what he's doing. You're right, and you know what? For someone who doesn't know what they're doing, I've done a lot with it. For someone who doesn't know what they're doing, I have a whole fucking career in bartending. I've over a decade of working at some of the hard, like, hardest bars to work at in the fucking country. I've been televised for bartending globally. I've been working for celebrities for over half a decade. I've created an entire brand based around cocktails and drinking. And some of the fucker who doesn't know what they're talking about is gonna come in and talk to me and tell me what I'm qualified to do? Fuck you. I just got Jersey. I fought for that turtle and to prove that it was different and we're proud of it. So I'm not gonna get rid of the turtle unless he comes with the- I'm not fucking talking about this fucking cup anymore. I'm fucking, I'm not fighting with you over a fucking cup, bitch. It's not working, let it go. Stop trying to make fetch happen. Now we're just saying the same thing over and over again. I don't fucking understand what's going on with any of these people. I can, I can get behind Clueless, because I love that movie, but I can't get behind stupid. <laughs>
and that's what this is. This shouldn't be called the most clueless bar owners. This is the dumbest, most stubborn bar owners. Well, I feel like that's a good place to stop because I don't feel like getting repetitive. In the comments down below, let me know an experience you had where you were clueless, but you were open to a discussion on how to be better and got better because of that. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like it and subscribe for future videos. I put them out weekly, usually on Tuesdays and Thursdays, but sometimes I'm late, just like your mom. Thank you to everybody over on Patreon, especially the regulars and barflies who help make this channel possible. And special shout out to this person over on Twitter. If you would like a special shout out in one of my videos, be sure to retweet them when they come out. If that's it guys, thank you so much for watching. My name is Mike MGTV and you are fucking welcome.